Tonight we deal with the topic, power of the tongue. And uh, it's my privilege to share with you tonight as Dr. Frost is live now at this very moment in Durban. And um, Dr. Frost is very excited to be out on the marketplace, to be out there with the people in the marketplace. And um, I had a very good report from him today with regards to the visit in Durban last night. And um, the people are enjoying it to see us face to face. And uh, the good news is tomorrow night it is Pretoria. So tomorrow night we will host you in Pretoria. What a wonderful occasion. We cannot wait to see you and host you in Pretoria. So tomorrow evening 7 o'clock in Pretoria. Saturday morning 9 o'clock in Pretoria. And uh, Dr. Frost on Saturday morning will live stream his uh, communion uh, morning communion from the venue uh, on Saturday morning. So it's an exciting time. It's time that we can get out there and start talking to the people and seeing people face to face. And um, yes, we are complying with all the COVID regulations. And uh, if you in the room, a, uh, a mask is compulsory. We comply with every bit of le legislation and regulation, but we comply with a word. We're getting out to the people we want to, we want to get connected with you. And um, as I said earlier, the feedback from Durban is amazing. And uh, Dr. Frost is really appreciating it, uh, meeting with you guys. And um, I know that they will have a blessed time tonight in Durban. But um, tonight we talk about uh, power, the power of the tongue. And um, before I share the subject with you, let's pray together as a family. Lord, we just come and we say thank you for the privilege that we can meet on this platform, that we can meet with one another. Lord, we are from all over the country, from all over the world in this meeting because you decided for this time, for a time like this time, for a time like now, churches will be more open than ever before. And we can connect with, with brethren and, and, and from all over the world. And we have time to sit with the family. People that were, we will not be able to be in a room with tonight. We are able to be in a room with through this medium. And we thank you for that privilege. Lord, I, I come and I bless every person. I command a blessing over every person under my voice at this moment. And every person that will listen to this delayed, I bless them in Jesus' name. Lord, I bless Dr. Frost and the team where they are in Durban tonight with the people that are attending in Durban. We bless them with a blessed evening and Holy Spirit, just pitch up, just come and bless them. Just come and be who you are. We thank you and we appreciate you. Everything in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, tonight you're in, at our house and um, we had the home sales, high seller in Afrikaans. Uh, we, we, um, we are Afrikaans, as you, you know very well. And um, we had a house for a few years and then we moved into English church and uh, with Dr. Frost in, in Father's Heart way back when it was still in Pretoria before he moved to PE. And um, we always had home cell um, at our house. We always had people at our home. We always had prayer groups. And for us, it is just something that should happen. It is natural for us to get together like we see in the Word, um, the Acts Church. It just a privilege to be together and tonight we together not in my in my house but we stole together from my house and you are so welcome here you are welcome in this place and um, tonight we talk about power of the tongue and um, the tongue is one of those fun things to talk about sometimes the tongue is something that creates you and I have the ability to create. God has created us with the ability 
to create. God has created me and you with the ability to create. And he's put that where? In our tongue. In a very small part of who we are. He's given us amazing power. And we have power in our tongue. And we should always look at how we use that power. How we use the power of our tongue. Because we can either build or we can break down. We can either create or we can destroy. And folks, we, we're done with destroying in our country. We're done with destroying in our nation. We want to build. We want to create. We want to be there where things happen. We want to be there where people come alive. Where people show us that they are alive. Where people build. Where people create. And you and I should, and we should build and create with our tongue. And uh, allow me to look at the scriptures because there's quite a number of scriptures on this topic. And allow me to look at these uh, scriptures tonight. And uh, the first scripture that I want to read to you is in um, 2 Corinthians verse 10, uh, 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4 to 6. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God to put, pull down strongholds. And you and I have the ability, we have received a tongue so that we can pull down strongholds. And it's imperative that you and I use our tongue for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, casting down arguments. You know how many times I hear people getting into arguments around the word. We should just cast down the arguments. We should not get into arguments about the word. The word is straightforward. But you and I will read the word and will see the word from the angle in which we come from at that very moment. The space that we're in spiritually at that very moment that we read it. Because that's the beauty of the, of the word. Haven't you seen how many times you read the same scripture but it means totally something different? How many times you read a scripture that you know very well and all of a sudden the scripture is different? Because that's the beauty of the Spirit. As you and I grow, as you and I allow ourselves to grow, our insight, our understanding of the Word will grow and will change and will mature. But so you and I have to mature our tongue as well. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And in there, in that verse 5, there's a little key. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And you and I sometimes allow our minds and our thoughts to be influenced by what is happening around us. And we should cast down these strongholds. And we should keep our thoughts captive. It is something that you and I have to do. You know what? In the Word, sometimes there's stuff that you and I have to do. There's, there are things that are required of us to take responsibility of. And this is an example with regards to the tongue. And being ready to punish all disobedience when obedience is fulfilled. You know what? When obedience is fulfilled, it will automatically punish disobedience. Why? Because in my life, if I fulfill, if I come into obedience, I will naturally punish the disobedience in my life because I will take control over it. I will not allow the disobedience to run, to run wild. I will, through my obedience, punish all disobedience in my life. Then we go and read Proverbs 18, verse 20 and 21. I think it's part of the part of the Bible that's quoted the most. Especially verse 21. But Proverbs 18 verse 20. A man's stomach shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. The question tonight is. What is filling your stomach tonight? What's the fruit that you're eating because of how you apply your tongue? From the produce of his lips he shall be filled. Just look around you tonight. Just see what is happening in the world around you tonight. Because it was created partly by you. By the use of your tongue. Then verse 21, the well-quoted verse. Death 
and life are the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Death and life. And you and I should choose life. You and I should choose life. Because we have that in the power of our tongue. And we will have to eat the fruit. We will enjoy the fruit of what we, what we say, what we do. And the, the beautiful part of that is verse 22. And I'm not going to read verse 22 now. I'm going to leave it up to you. Every person in this room, please make a note. Proverbs 18 verse 22. Please go read that. For the ladies... You will be so chuffed with me. So please go read Proverbs 18, 22 as a bonus. And I sp specifically do that for the ladies tonight. To honor every lady in the room tonight. Let's go to Proverbs 21, 23. Whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from troubles. If you want to keep your soul from troubles, if you want to keep your mind from wandering and getting you into trouble, if you want to get your mind, to stop your mind from taking you places where you shouldn't go, guard your mouth. Guard your mouth and keep your tongue because it will get you, stop you from getting into trouble. And you and I, a lot of time, a lot of people just run off their tongue and they get into trouble. But you know, there's so many scriptures that help us to get a grip of this. And we read Proverbs 15 verse 1 to 4. A soft answer turns away rough. A soft answer. You know, sometimes you and I just have to answer out of the Spirit and not just out of what is happening around us. Not out of the pressure, the pressure cooker that we're in. Not out of the pressure around us. But a harsh word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge rightly. But the mouth of the fool pours forth foolishness. There's always a know-it-all everywhere. And for me and you, the key is, whenever we have the know-it-all with us, wherever we are, is to not stir up the people around us against them. But to help them to understand that they're not using their, their tongue wisely. But to softly, gently guide them and help them to understand that they should apply their tongue differently. Because the fruit will be different. And for them to start using their, their tongue wisely. Because a know-it-all is sometimes a problem. And the key is that you and I should should make sure that you and I keep our tongues bridled. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. Thank you for someone that said there's a popping sound. It was a pop-up that came up on my, on my application that I ran Facebook on, and I've stopped that. Thank you for alerting me to that. I didn't realize that. Thank you. Um, for covering me. I appreciate that. A wholesome tum, tongue is a tree of life, but per, perverseness in it breaks the spirit. A wholesome tum, tongue is a tree of life. And you and I can choose to be a tree of life. What are you doing with your tongue? How are you applying your tongue? Are you a tree of life? Are you... A tree of life. Keep your mouth, keep your life. Proverbs 13 verse 2 to 3. A man shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth. But the soul of the unfaithful feeds on violence. How often do we see this? How often do we see that the soul of the unfaithful feeds on violence? Because the man shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth. And it's imperative that you and I understand that. And that we, we make sure that we, we keep our tongue bridled. He who guards his mouth preserves his life. But he who opens wide his lips shall have destruction. 
And how true is that in relationships? How true is that in relationships? He who guards his mouth preserves his life. How true is that in relationships? Because sometimes people just want to tell someone else something. We just want to run our tongue against someone else. And we need to make sure that we don't break relationships. That we don't uh, destroy, but that we preserve. Luke, five, Luke 6 verse 45 A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. And the moment that someone uses their tongue, you know what is in their heart. Because the abundance of their heart is what will come forth. That is what the tongue will speak. And that's the, the beautiful part of the tongue. Your tongue will show people where and who you are and what you are doing and why you are doing what you're doing. And you and I have to make sure that we that we're not running our tongue against other, other people. And here comes a crux part of tonight's teaching with regards to the tongue. James 3 verse 3 to 12. Indeed we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us and we turn their whole body. How many times have you seen a young lady, a young lady, a timid small bull, but she can control a beast of a horse purely because there is a bit in his mouth. And you and I can control our lives, our being, the people around us, creating by the use of our tongue. And it's imperative that you and I understand that we can, can actually do and create with our tongue. Remember, our tongue is there to create. Our tongue is there to create and not to destroy. Verse 4. Look also at ships, although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder, wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. How great a forest a little fire kindles. And you and I can create a big fire with our small tongue. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature and is set on fire by hell. And remember, when you're passionate about something, how you can use your tongue and create the fire under people and create fire and speak well and, and stir people to participate. Because the tongue is powerful. The tongue is a powerful tool. And you and I need to decide how we use this tongue and what we, what we do with our tongue. And it's imperative that you and I understand that. For every kind of beast and bird of, of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. No man can tame the tongue. It is unruly evil, full of deadly poison. And you and I need to make sure that we spend time with the Holy Spirit. That we spend time, the moment that we want to react, just spend a little time with the Holy Spirit. Because with our tongue we can destroy, but we can also build. With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse man, men. The same tongue. And we should start blessing people around us and not curse them. It doesn't matter who they are. Who have been made in the similitude of God. Not only Christians. We should not curse any man. You should not curse those who you think you like or don't like. We should curse no man. And that's the, the beautiful part. Out of some same mouth proceed blessings and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring set forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Thus no spring yield both salt and fresh water. So what comes from your mouth? How many times have you seen people 
using their tongue for destruction. But you and I should make sure that we apply our mind and press in with the Holy Spirit before we apply our tongue. Because you and I can use our tongue to get people to, to know Jesus Christ. To get people to get into life. Into eternal life. By understanding the power of our tongue. The last scripture for tonight. Sacrifice of our lips. Hebrew 13 verse 15 to 16. Therefore by him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips. Giving thanks to his name. And I truly think I should read that again. Therefore by him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips. Giving thanks to his name. And that's the, the beautiful part of what you and I have as the power in our tongue. Give thanks to his name. But do not forget to do good and to share for which such sacrifices God is well pleased. And you and I have a tongue. And it's imperative that we have a tongue. Because with that tongue we can create life. With that tongue we can help and assist people into life. With that tongue, we can help and assist people to get into eternal life. With that tongue, we can help people to see that there's grace for them this side of the grave. That we can show them that there's grace on this earth by the way that we use our tongue. By what we do with our tongue. And it's imperative that you and I understand that little part. That you and I understand that we have the power to allow, to assist people. To see Jesus Christ by what we create with our tongue. And I want to bless you. And I want to send you today with a blessing over your tongue. With a blessing in how you use your tongue. With a blessing of having your thoughts captive. And giving you the wisdom to grab hold of what you think. And to allow yourself to tame your tongue. To bridle your tongue. Before you speak. So that when we speak. We create. When we speak. We create life. When we speak. We speak love. When we speak. We allow others. To get closer. To Jesus Christ. We allow others. To see the working. Of the Holy Spirit. In our lives. So folks. For tonight. I say. Go out there. Press in with the Holy Spirit. Get your thoughts captive. Get your thoughts, your tongue bridled so that we speak life. Get some word into you so that you can speak word. If you don't have anything good to say, speak word. Speak life. Get people to see that there is grace this side of the grave. Because with our tongues we can create life. And we can stop people and we can pull them out of death. And into eternal life. With the power of our tongue. Lord we just come tonight. And we come give you all the glory. All the honor. As the creator. And Lord as the creator. You created us in your image. In your likelihood. And you gave us a tongue. With which we can create. A tongue with which we can create a world around us. And Lord, I want to bless everyone under the sound of my voice tonight to become a creator to your heart. A creator that will create, that will be a sweet fragrance unto our God, unto the creator. Lord, allow us to bridle our tongue. Allow us to see the people around us for who they are and not to what we perceive they are and not to Talk to them, to what we perceive, but to see what you have built into them, to see what you have created in them, so that we can create around them life. And we speak life. We speak life into our country. We speak life into what is happening in our country at the moment. We speak life into every person under the sound of my voice. We speak life into every situation. We know 
that you are God the Creator. And for that we say thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen and Amen.